Hi, today I'm going to show you my housing setup for my quail. And just like any other animal, before you bring quail home, if you decide to get into them, you're going to want to figure out the housing setup because it would just not be fun to bring a whole bunch of little quail home and then not know where to put them and be in a mad rush to figure out the house. So just in general, it's always a good idea to, before you get an animal, to figure out what kind of house you're going to set up for them. And um, quail are a little bit interesting because they can be kept in so many different housing setups. You can keep them outside as long as they're in an enclosed run that's really predator proof because they don't have a lot of the natural instincts to keep them safe from predators. So you're going to have to do a lot of work with that. And then they also need a shelter um, that would be windproof so that they don't get too cold. You can also keep them indoors, which is what I prefer because then I don't have to worry so much about the, the predator proofing. Um, they do have a bit of a smell to them, so you might want to be mindful of that. But I find that if, as long as I keep the um, manure trays clean, it's not really that big of a deal. So I keep ours in our garage because that works best for us. Um, because there's so many different ways that you can house them, it does end up being a little bit tricky because you're going to have to kind of play around with what works best for you. And so to help with that, I'm going to show the setup that I have just to give you a starting point to figure out what would work best for you. If you are getting your quail as the day old chicks, or if you're hatching out your own eggs, which is what I did with these, these are all little guys that I've hatched out a couple days ago. Um, the brooder setup is pretty similar to any other chicks that you're going to raise. You're going to need a heat lamp and then food and water and um, clean bedding. I like to use these little wood shavings, uh, but there's lots of different kinds of bedding that you can use. The only difference between these and say like chickens is you're going to need to put some rocks or marbles in the bottom of the water because most chicken waters are deep enough that the little quail can go for a swim, which is not ideal. They, they shouldn't swim. Um, <laughs> but other than that, the, the breeder setup is pretty much the same. The original quail house that I had set up, I talked a little bit about in my post, was an old rabbit hutch that we did. And there's things that I like about this setup and things that I don't like. So I'll explain a little bit about that. I think that this is a good setup for, and this is what I'm gonna use it for, um, for like the teenage years, the grow out years, when they're a little bit too big for the brooder, but they're not quite mature yet, which with quail is only gonna be like three to four weeks tops. Um, so with this, what I did to convert it from the rabbit hutch um, most rabbit hutches will already have a wire bottom, but this one didn't. So I just added wire to the bottom and, um, <laughs> you're going to have to remember quail poop a lot. And, um, so the wire bottom with a pullout tray is really the best bet because it makes cleanup so much easier. If you have just a plain solid bottom, you're gonna have to be scooping it out all the time just so that your quail's feet don't get all gross. So that's something to think about. The wire bottom is so much easier for cleanliness. Um, I did a makeshift feeder, which worked out pretty good. Um, just filled it full of food right there. It would go down into here. They could come out right here and then I put this over the top. I had it taped, I have it secured in there when I actually have quail in there. I just moved it out so that I could clean it a little bit better since I don't have any in there. I need to clean this whole thing out. And then for the water, I have this bucket and then if you can see in there, I've got the little poultry cups and then they can run up and down here. Um, it's really fun to watch them play in here. I also keep this little bucket, I put sand in it because quail like to have dust baths and it's really, really fun to watch them play in a dust bath. The only thing I didn't like about this setup um, is that it made gathering eggs kind of hard. And if you were going to try and hatch out your own eggs, 
you need to have them be really clean. And this was a little bit trickier to keep the eggs clean just because it did have a lot more solid spots for them. And um, so I think if you were going to just raise quail as pets and only keep a couple of them, this kind of a setup would work great because um, it's fun to watch them run up and down the stairs and play and, and it works out pretty good. But for a breeder setup, I like to use these cages. And these cages are from Hatching Time. They are made out of plastic, which I like just because I think it's a little bit softer on the quail feet. And um, they're, they're really good cages. Um, you can stack multiple levels up on top of each other, which I think is a really great use of the vertical space. Um, it's got slanted floors, so when they lay an egg, they come up here, so the eggs are always gonna be really clean. And I think that is a really great feature. The feeder troughs are awesome. They don't waste the feed. Um, this is a shockproof grill, because if you just have it open like that, let's see if I can get one out to show you. Quail are kind of messy. They like to shake while they eat their food. Um, and so this kind of helps it so that their food doesn't get scattered everywhere. And then it's got a watering system that you fill up this tank up here, and then it goes down through there. And then it feeds across to all of the different um, different pens. I did change out, they come with the little poultry nipples and I don't particularly like those because I think that they leak a lot more. And so I switched all of them out with poultry cups which was super easy because they're the same size. And so that worked out really good for us. Um, and then they have these trays that catch the poop and um, every other day I go and empty out the poop trays, wash them down and put them back. And so the birds, they're pretty clean and happy and it's, I love these cages. I think they're great. They also at hatching time have um, a brooder level that you can add to this. So you can have the bottom level be a brooder level and um, they grow out and the brooder level is cool because it's got a heater in it so you don't have to worry about heat lamps um, So it's got a little space heater and Then they also have grow out levels. There's there's a whole bunch of cool things on hatching time site uh, I really recommend go look, looking at those because these are my favorite cages um, I Don't there's a couple things that like I said with the water that I've played around with a little bit, but Overall, I think these are pretty great cages. Um, I, on their website, they say you can fit five to, five to seven birds in each pen. I stick with six because I like a ratio of one rooster to five hens. And I think that gives the birds plenty of space. Um, quail like to, huddle into groups anyway. So even if you gave them this huge open space, they'd kind of stick together in the corner anyway. So I think that gives them good space and it keeps them really clean. And it's easy to see if your birds need any help because um, if they're in a big aviary, I think it's a little bit hard to gather eggs. And I also think um, that it's harder to tell what's going on with your birds because just it's a huge space for them. So this is what works out great for us. I know a lot of people keep them in aviaries outside and they do really good with them. I just, this is the setup that works good for us, especially for doing um, a little bit more bulk production. I like to use the eggs. And then we also use, I grow some of the chicks out for meat. And so this, this is a great option if you're doing it more for um, self-sustain, sustainability. And, um, so yeah, these, these are the different house setups we have. Um, I was gonna show, it's kind of crazy how, how these little guys can turn into these in just eight weeks. 
they grow super fast. And it's fun to watch that happen. I, I think that quail are really fun and I hope that you'll at least try them out and that these cage setups give you kind of an idea of what would work best for you. So thank you for watching.